Welcome to the Nutramedical Report live for Monday, the 9th of July, and we have an amazing program lined up for you today. Mark Gaffney, the first hour, health and wellness hour, top uh, guests and new technologies, and Dr. Kip Van Camp in the third hour, the uh, new book called Misdiagnosis about Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, and what it means. Uh, coming up tomorrow, Chris Putnam and maybe Tom Horn as well on Petrus Romamas, the final pope. And Gary Creep, the attorney that's been dealing with the many different issues, uh, dealing with the Marine that was, that was being dismissed from the Marines because of comments on a private network about Obama. Uh, remarkable shows coming up this entire week, so stay tuned. Mark, your book is probably one of the most important books because the financial side of 9-11 is probably the, if you want to call it the blacker, the black and red, the more important side because there were events happening before 9-11 uh, and since for years including the ARIA complex in Las Vegas has been funded by the Blackstone Group from the insurance money that was received as a result of the double insurance uh, indemnity for the World Trade Center Towers demolition. So uh, you've got a lot of things here. One of the things you're talking about before the break, which might be a good start, is right in the middle of the book, chapter 10 called The Bank of New York and the Fed and Skimming Off of Pensions, etc. This is an unfolding story in 2012, but there's a lot of, uh, as I say, uh, Mickey Spillane said many years ago when he wrote uh, novels uh, back in the 30s and 20s, if you uh, want to make a, a good, uh, if you want to call it story, a gumshoe story, uh, you want to follow the money. And uh, that's what you've done here. The 9-11 financial side in many ways is bigger and a more building story than even the demolition of the World Trade Center towers. That's right, Doctor. And this story continues. Uh, the Bank of New York uh, is... Uh has been in the news uh, uh, continuously almost uh, since the uh, mid '90s, and uh, well, I don't know where to begin. There's so much to talk about. Well, let's but, start off uh, with what they're doing with insurance. They were skimming for decades, but uh, Bank of New York and the Fed. The Fed, of course, is always showing up in criminal activities, uh, and it's more than just auditing the Fed. We've had uh, Walter Burian on talking about this. They need to completely take it over. The idea that there is a Fed with four, uh, five foreign if you want to call it uh, banks that are actually not even American, that are actually determining our credit and our production of money is insane, that we hand over our money power to a private institution. It's neither Fed nor Reserve. Uh, and then they do all kinds of criminal activity. And again, this came out recently with Barclays uh, Bank. Uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg of this disaster that's been going on between these banks all around the world. That's right. You're talking about LIBOR. Yeah, the LIBOR, which is the London overnight uh, banking uh, you know, in interest rate. That's right. Well, that's, that may be the biggest story of all. Uh, I don't cover it in the book, and it wasn't breaking until after the book went to press. But uh, let's talk about the bank in New York. That's big enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's start over that. Let's, let's talk about B-O-N-Y. Well, it looks like in, in the 1990s, the bank in New York was helping in the looting of Russia. They set up a, uh, a money, uh, money laundering scheme. Uh, what it was was a computerized wire transfer system to enable the speedy washing of money out of Russia. Now, they laundered anywhere from 10 to $22 billion over a period of years, uh, helping uh, to br you know, bring Russia to her knees. And uh, the vice president who, of the bank who had supervised this operation Ms. Kagalovsky uh, was connected through her husband to uh, Russian President Boris Yeltsin and to uh, the Russian oligarch, also Mikhail Khodorovsky. And it does appear that the uh, U.S. intelligence community was involved also because one of the principal uh, st uh, shareholders in the bank in New York was Bruce Rappaport, who has been linked to all manner of uh, dodgy activities over many, many years. He yeah, had a exactly. private uh, phone line with William Casey, was William Casey's personal golfing buddy, and apparently he used to use uh, Casey's private elevator when he visited his partner, his, uh, well, let me just say his pal at CIA headquarters. Yeah, exactly. So in other words, uh, CIA were directly involved with this, and of course this is a basis of a movie a few years ago, I think played for by um, uh, one of our top Hollywood actors. What was his name? Um, Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks played the uh, role of this uh, guy that literally did the financial takedown of Russia using financial finagling, and that's exactly what they did do. I mean, it was actually 
a, a, it was actually a financial implosion of the Soviet Union that was done to collapse it. Yes, and one of the uh, one of the themes of my book was uh, to discuss a theory uh, by E. P. Heidner uh, that uh, a group around Bush had actually set out a deliberate plan back in 1991. Uh, that uh, that involved hundreds of billions of dollars in collateralized securities to bring about this to to help deconstruct Russia so it could never challenge the U.S. again, and that uh, uh, he- Heidner believed that they had transgressed certain laws, triggering a number of investigations by, for example, the uh, Naval Office of Naval Intelligence and another uh, agency at the U.S. Customs House and several others and that uh, the law was actually closing in on these guys and uh, that 9-11 was, was in part uh, a scheme to shut down these investigations and, you know, provide cover for this whole operation. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's, let's get into what happened just before 9-11 because there were a lot of stock changes even on American Airlines. There was financial finagling going on. There were trillions of dollars that were lost by, on the accounting books for the Pentagon, $2.3 trillion by Z- Dove Zockheim. Uh, the the comptroller for the Pentagon, lots of things happening that people really don't understand, and they've never been settled. There's been no congressional committee settled them. The 9/11 Commission never dealt with these. They didn't deal with the uh, double insurance or where did the money go afterward, which is believe it or not, the Aria Complex, the most advanced gambling, beautiful buildings ever built on the planet, in downtown Las Vegas, are a direct result of the monies from 9/11. The Blackstone Group tied directly to to Evelyn Rothschild, the, the you know the Rothschild bankers in Europe. I mean, and, and of course, uh, Silver, Larry Silverstein was the front man for this whole insurance fraud that went on. I uh, got documents from a munitions expert uh, that in 1998 was requested by the Port Authority in New York uh, to look at the demolition of the buildings uh, using micronukes and other advanced explosives to demolish them because they were been known to be environmental hazards back since the 1970s because it would have cost a billion and a half dollars per floor to actually remove all the asbestos alone, let alone the liquid polychlorinated biphenyls and step-down transformers in the walls of the building that were out of date and dangerous. So uh, these are environmental hazard buildings. They had poor air circulation systems, and I heard that they also had problems with black mold in the buildings as well. They were also not designed for the uh, information future uh, superhighway. Apparently, it was uh, kind of a nightmare trying to rewire the buildings uh, for the computer age. (coughs) Yeah, exactly. So what we have is a a disaster that they figured, well, we'll just turn this into this white elephant into a a cash cow. And then they also used it as a modus with uh, Dick Cheney collaborating in the bunker to actually manage this. We know the the only way these jets could have, quote, threaded a needle to hit the building is if there were beacons inside the buildings. And secondly, that the jets would not have brought the building down because the impact wouldn't transfer enough kinetic energy to bring the buildings down or the burning of 1,600 degrees of jet fuel, JP-8, on two-inch thick uh, asbestos-covered six-foot to eight-foot thick girders would be impossible to actually bring the building down. We know that the buildings were brought down by high explosives, including micronukes and a chain of pearls through the center core outside, uh, proven already with chemical uh, research from Dr. Jones, that the buildings outside joists were cut with super thermate. The fact is that they were also using advanced demolitions in the Oklahoma City Murrah building, and that's why they pursued me up to five years ago, February, uh, to try to get me in front of Judge Mates, and it's only my counter threats that actually prevented me from being a political prisoner even after I started my show here on Genesis Network. So I threatened to get We Are Change Colorado and do a videotape right in front of the, st- the District 5 courthouse in downtown Denver, and they relented when there was collaboration between the Attorney General's Office of Colorado and the Department of Justice, and again, it's tied directly to Mr. Margolis and to Mr. Uh, Eric Holder, who is directly involved with covering up data, and I have the redacted documents, multiple redacted documents from Jesse Trinidou and others that have absolute proof that Mr. Holder has been involved in misprision of justice along with Judge Meech. Well, Doctor, the evidence that I present in my book for insider trading and following the money trail actually uh, reinforces the evidence uh, that was found in 2007 in the uh, you know the residues of uh, 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 thermite in the uh, World Trade Center dust. Uh, this uh, it really all substantiates it. It, it uh, corroborates that because yeah. it's clear that whoever put the explosives or ordered the explosives installed in the buildings. Uh, 
And I agree with you, there may have been uh, something a lot more powerful than thermite in there. Uh, well, we, we know that I had two physicists. It, had to be I, mid, it could not have been mid-level management. It had to well, be people at the very top. I presented it five years ago in June. That's just uh, five years, one month ago, in Vancouver 9-11. Truth in Vancouver, Canada. The data proving from the U.S. Geological, their data on radioisotope analysis, including levels of tritium 55 times background in the World Trade Center 6, as well as many other bits of data, almost 40 different anomalies that prove they use advanced nuclear and non-nuclear thermate explosives to demolish those buildings. Had two physicists working on it as well with me. One of the things I recommend, uh, Mark, is you're a great author and a researcher, is to write a screenplay on this. You know, have uh, fictitious uh, characters, but all the facts are real. Have the real maps, all the real documents. Tie together Oklahoma City and, and 9-11. Tie it together with the financial side. Tie it to ARIA. Uh, put together a screenplay so we can have a miniseries on television or uh, a series of blockbuster movies. And I think maybe it'll get through to people's psyche because, you see, people are still collectively in a state of post-traumatic national shock. PTSD is not just an individual thing. And one of the things that I tell people is PTSD to your autonomic nervous system and your basal nuclei, everything is now. The nation has not by any means gotten over 9-11, which is why the government's getting away with abusing and assaulting people at the airport with TSA, putting in measures like the Affordable Care Act and there's not a public outcry and national protests. The, the nation is still in a state of shock since 9-11. And I don't believe that the nation's gotten over it. They haven't gotten the truth. They've got either whitewash or total destruction. And a lot of people have tried to come forward. They have, if they have been timid to come forward, the powers that be have terminated them quickly. Now, they go and get Bambi first. They don't get the big bad bear because the big bad bear will either sue them or shoot them. And I tell people, even if you come here with a lot of armed forces and you have a lot of body bags, you better carry some for your own buddies because some of them aren't going home to their wives. They may kill me, but I'm going to make sure that you're not going to go home, all of you. One of the and, whistleblowers discussed in my book, Richard Grove, uh, he was the first one to actually uh, uh, discuss, you know, from him I heard the idea that uh, whoever staged 9-11 uh, intentionally plan this thing to be on television so that it would traumatize well, the entire nation. Right, exactly. But you have to also understand there's another part of it, too. It's a psychic trauma. Remember, this is a, this is a spiritual ceremony. It's the ancient ceremony called the Phoenix. And when they did it, remember now, 10 years to the day earlier, George Bush Sr. announced uh, that about the needing to be a new world order. That's right, 1991. Okay. 1991. Now, you have to understand that George Bush Sr., or should I should, have, should, should say George Scherf Sr., because actually uh, that's not his real name, he's adopted. Uh, he's actually, uh, George Bush Sr. is an interesting character if you go back through his history. Uh, George Bush completed a project that was started by the Nazis back in the 1930s called Project Omega, which is a super agency of every single security agency on the planet, including the Russian GRU, Brazilian Security Police, CSIS in Canada, British MI5 and MI6, a super agency over all agencies on the planet. And uh, George Bush actually completed that. Their headquarter um, underground base is actually in Colorado. And what people should understand is that America has prescient computing power, military, and space power over every other nation on the planet. And, of course, with the demolition of Russia, it could never compete on an on a equal footing in terms of advanced space exploration or other work. Uh, and most of our, quote, space projects have gone black up. That's why you even see the so-called Tinker Toy um, shuttle program just shut right down, because it's well, all black there up. Is no, there was no replacement for the shuttle, which tells us that what? They've already got the replacement, but it's in black. It's totally black. Yeah, let me explain. In 2010, I was told this back in 2005, in 2010, the Aurora Space Fleet, we're talking about fleets, not just vehicle, a vehicle, fleets, were to come out of service in 2010 because they had a replacement upgrade for the fleets of Aurora spacecraft that were in operation for over 30 years. So while they had the so-called Tinker Toy uh, um, space shuttle, they were also having entire fleets of different types of craft. The main one was the Aurora, which was developed, of course, at uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base and in the facilities in, uh, in Arizona. So, you know... But 
that's when we see the move towards SpaceX, as if uh, Mr. Uh, Musk is the inventor of all of the SpaceX. SpaceX is it just like the development of the uh, so-called Facebook, as if the you know Zuckerberg invented Facebook. It's entirely NSA, no such agency. Um, and that's why you see the fingerprints of, of the CIA and FBI all over and the NSA all over Oklahoma City, over 9-11, and over this dialectic to actually take down the world. It's all part well, of the same... It does appear to, to have been a convergence of interests uh, involving uh, the neocons, uh, uh, the uh, Zionists, and the money interests uh, in Wall Street uh, to stage this. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. So let's go through some of the chapters. Uh, they started off with uh, four warnings. What were the four warnings and the, four, and the crashes and so on occurring before 9-11? What happened first? Well, the four, I was talking, uh, this chapter is really about uh, the expose um, uh, by Gary Webb that uh, first appeared in the U.S. in 1996. The ex, uh, <clears throat> Webb exposed the CIA's involvement with the uh, drug running uh, the the raising of money by the uh, uh, the uh, forces down in that were fighting the Sandinistas the uh, uh, Contras and uh, he paid a heavy price even though that uh, his research was really good and the uh, actually he was right on target uh, Webb himself was became under a uh, a CIA ban, you know. I mean, this guy became the the object of tremendous ridicule and was was called a conspiracy theorist and so on. His career was ruined. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, the um, it's curious that um, uh, the very thing that happened in the nineties, um, the, the situation with the the, the CIA linked to the drug uh, narco trafficking, uh, even today. Even the New York uh, Times has reported CIA involvement, uh, the payoff of the uh, brother of President Karzai of uh, Afghanistan by the CIA. But 9-11 is now the taboo area. Well, let's put it this way. When I was taking care of uh, pilots and repair uh, engineers taking care of the Black Op helicopters flying at a Buckley and the uh, big C-130 uh, heavy lift aircraft flying out of Peterson Air Force Base in Buckley in, in Aurora, Colorado. I remember one uh, day uh, one of the uh, senior technicians came back and he was kind of freaked out because he had just gone through an aircraft loaded to the gunnels, packed with uh, pallet loads of, of uh, uh, drugs coming in. And this is a regular basis. And he was completely freaked out, wanted to talk and talk and talk because he was suicidal. And uh, we did everything for this gentleman, and eventually he did commit suicide. I mean, we, we had him see a psychiatrist. You know, the thing is, we don't know if he was suicided because he started talking. Yeah. Uh, because the circumstances were very strange after when he disappeared. And then we found out these details that sounded really out of, uh, out of uh, sync with the fact that he was making some improvements. So, uh, no, we, we know that the drugs are coming in and out, and they're being brought in by military aircraft and by naval, air, uh, naval ship uh, into bases like in um, Florida and elsewhere. That what is really shocking, containers. Doctor, is at least I was shocked and le at learning just how far up the food chain uh, this rod goes. Uh, we know that Clinton and H.W. Bush were both, you know, in a, like supervisory positions involved uh, with this narco trafficking. Exactly. Well, we know that the, the reason why Waco, Texas happened. People think it was just kind of knocking out uh, this uh, cult in Waco. No. It turned out two of the people that were actually in the cult, senior people, were actually working at the local airport where the drugs were coming through the Waco Airport in Texas on their way from uh, Central and South America. And that's why they took out Waco. Back in a moment with more Black 9-11. You want to get it. Money, motive, and technology. Mark H. Gaffney. back and let's get into the information regarding the Bank of New York. The, uh, this is quite a story and of course uh, we have lots of names that keep popping up. People like Gary Webb, 
his book Dark Alliance in 1998, uh, Maurice Greenberg, and of course the Blackstone Group. Uh, let's talk about the Bank of New York because these criminals have been involved at a very high level. We know that what's going on is way over the top and by no means controlled. Uh, in fact, they're now talking about QE3, which is a $2.3 trillion estimated that they're going to print more money out of thin air and buy bonds, which they magically put the pixie dust on to say now the Federal Reserve uh, prints the money, sends it over to, to the Treasury office after they put a little stamp on it, and then all of a sudden their pixie dust, it becomes real money, diluting the real money in people's pension funds, their equity in their home, and etc., and the real value of the economy, and opening us up to being bought out by countries like China that are buying real estate in places like Idaho and other countries, farm real estate, by the way, uh, and um, it's putting America up on the chopping block to be sold, is what it is. Well, we mentioned before that the Bank of New York had been engaged in a money laundering operation uh, uh, in the 1990s, the looting of Russia, to the tune of 10 to $22 billion. Well, this first came to light back in 1999, uh, the case was delayed by the 9-11 attacks, but eventually the investigation resumed. Um, ultimately, two lesser bank uh, executives pled guilty and were fined a total of around $700,000. Now, which is <clears throat> silly if you re if you recall that they laundered the bank had laundered anywhere from 10 to 20 billion. So what they got was a, a couple of the lesser executives got a hand slap. And the woman who had the, the vice president at the bank who had supervised that operation was never even charged with a crime, and she was allowed to exercise millions in stock options. So this tells you, you know, the seriousness with which we're uh, holding our, our uh, banking industry accountable. Now, the, the, the Bank of New York actually agreed to clean up its act and introduce a number of reforms so that, there, you know, we wouldn't have a, re a repeat of this. But it, they were—they really were just talking out of one side of their mouth because we found out uh, late last year that <clears throat> uh, that they that they never learned the lesson. Okay, the the New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman has filed suit against the Bank of New York uh, for a defrauding thousands of clients out of at least two billion dollars in a foreign currency exchange manipulation scheme actually the total was much higher than that um, according to Harry Markopoulos because this thing goes back decades but according to the uh, New York law the statute of limits only allows them to go back ten years so even as the bank of New York was being investigated for money laundering in the nineties this thing was they were engaging in this other simultaneous uh, ripoff uh, so it shows that they, they simply have no uh, shame, these guys. Now, in a moment, let's get into the link to 9-11, because that's also extremely interesting. And I, the, uh, the evidence for criminality, non-9-11 criminality, is, is, it very strongly uh, supports our suspicions about 9-11. Yeah. And that's a point I make in the book over and over again. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, in other words, it, it further supports the idea that there was a controlled demolition. Uh, I've been trying, actually, as I've mentioned on this show for years. That's why I, I dare anybody, I double dare them, to suggest that anything other than a controlled demolition and a controlled financial demolition, which started in, 19, uh, in 2001 with 9-11, which is now designed, I believe, to be a 11-year demolition of the world economy coming up this September. And everything is pointing toward them for forcing down the throat. In fact, uh, uh, Mr. Assad of Syria came on uh, German radio, ARD uh, television, I mean, and he actually made the statement even after he said we, he agreed that Kofi Annan's plan was a good plan, but that the other side would not be able to, uh, to cooperate because the United States, Britain, and France and other countries were supplying weapons and logistic support for the, quote, terrorists inside the country that have been, been creating this war. The, the West wants to bring down the regime because they want a total takeover of Syria and a balkanization, and they want to have a Sunni-Shiite conflict in the Middle East that will eventually clamp down the oil production at the Strait of Hormuz. It's all by design while Europe is melting down, and Europe isn't going to make it. I guarantee you that by the fall, Europe will be completely toast, and it's all by design. They set up this regime in such a way, and it's a, it's a situation to create a debt monster to swallow up the whole planet, and then create a new world currency, which will be controlled by these same bankers. Only this time, everybody's value, everybody's, if you want to call it assets, will be worthless, and they'll be the only ones with credit to buy everything up in a fire sale. Right. 
So you see a real, I mean, another major hit to the U.S. Uh, standard of living coming around 11 years, the yeah. Yeah, I think that the 11-year anniversary, which is coming up this September, is the real 9-11. The 11 years after 9-11 is when they're going to really bring the curtain down. Well, let me finish up with the Bank of New York. Um, yeah. One of the reasons that, that I went to such lengths in, uh, in laying out the evidence for criminality at the Bank of New York is because they may have been involved in the 9-11 attacks. This was the, uh, the belief of E.P. Heidner in his, his 58-page paper, Collateral Damage, and I spent like four to five chapters of my book going into this trying to see if, if there was a basis for it. And I, I found a surprising amount of evidence <clears throat> indicating that he might have been onto something. Um, because after the 9-11 attacks, there was, as we know, there was chaos on, on Wall Street. And in that chaos, the Bank of New York and the Fed might have gotten away with almost anything. But what Heidner thought was his idea was that um, 9-11 was the, the mother of all money laundering operations. Because um, you see, the, on 9-11, on the morning of 9-11, the stock market never opened because it opens at 9 a.m. So they just never opened it that morning. But the securities market opens earlier, and there were something like $600 billion in transactions that had already been executed when the attacks started. And what happened was, because of all the breakdowns in communication uh, and the destruction, um, there was they had to actually shut down Wall Street for about four or five days. And the, the banks, like the Bank of New York, shifted to their backup facilities that were outside of New York, and they gradually brought the system back online. However, even after that, there were, there were major problems that continued for weeks in the form of failed transactions. They called them fails, okay? And these added up to hundreds of billions of dollars in um, securities that, that basically uh, were just uh, stalled. Uh, the, the whole system ground to a halt. It kind of backed up. And it turned out that most of that the large part of these fails appeared to be concentrated in the Bank of New York. In one week alone, there was over a hundred billion dollars, and this was actually uh, uh, discussed in the U.S. press and the Wall Street media. Uh, but it was never we never really got the explanation about what was really going on. So the, the idea was that um, Heidner's thesis was that they used the confusion to to launder the several hundred billion dollars in securities that had been collateralized in 1991 that were coming due in September uh, 2001 basically to just eliminate you know wash these things away so that they could hide their uh, so that the uh, they could hide this secret operation exactly yeah in other words the 911 demolition was a cover for an actual financial demolition and hiding this debt that's right and Heidner goes even further he uh, there's, you know, it's very coincidental and very curious and very suspicious that that the planes targeted Marsh and McLennan and that there were there were a, a number of security brokers that were that were completely wiped out in the buildings. Uh, they may have been intentionally surgically targeted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in fact, we know that some things there, were, there was messaging go to Odigo, uh, which is up in one of the towers. There were the Israeli messaging company. The, the total number of people in the towers was a tiny fraction of the total that should have been between the mall and the two towers. Altogether, there should have been around 35,000 people potentially that could have been killed. There were only 3,000 in the towers, which means there's the, one of the big stories that no one's talked about in messages is that there were a lot of people that got some advanced warning, just like in Oklahoma City, don't be in the building. Just like there were no federal officers either, it was the FBI and ATF that were inside the Oklahoma City Murrah building when the buildings were demolished. None. Yeah, there were Not security one. traders like Cantor Fitzgerald, you know, the leading U.S. security broker. Uh, uh, they lost like 661 in, uh, employees that, that day. And uh, the other likely targets may, uh, were, were the agencies that were actually doing the investigations. For example, the El Dorado Task Force was an interagency money laundering watchdog group uh, that was in the Customs House in Building 6. And as we know... Welcome back, and uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I recently got accused of, and I think it's actually quite funny when I think about it, because you get sometimes you get to stand back, is I've been accused, uh, Dr. Deagle, you're accused of either being narcissistic or the Forrest Gump syndrome. Well, I wasn't in control of my calendar. Uh, 
when I turned up on and went to Colorado Springs, I was by supernatural appointment to be actually walked through the supercomputers of the literal system that will eventually be the mark of the beast or the exit examining doctor for the Oklahoma City Murrow building or the doctor for the first kid shot in Columbine or the doctor for Rocky Flats for the Superfund testing by the federal government and fired for it because they were finding so much radioisotopes getting in the groundwater was heading toward the North Platte River which by the way eventually we know that Stanley Lake in north of uh, Colorado Denver north, is highly radioactive and uh, that, in fact, the radioactive tailings from the Schwarzman mine were actually leading right into the Grand Lake Reservoir system, which is coming down to Denver. So most people don't realize no one's testing the water in Denver for radioactivity, but guess what? You're all being poisoned. And, uh, you know, do radioactive testing. Find out if you have thorium in your water. You say, oh, thorium. One in 50 thorium atoms, by the way, is radioactive, and if it comes from a nuclear reactor, uh, you know, mine, which has the highest concentration, highest grade uranium in North America, even higher grade than the giant radioactive uranium mines up in Saskatchewan, uh, Canada, where in the Schwarzman mine, we're above the water table for Colorado. So, no, I don't have the Forrest Gump syndrome. I just happen to have a big mouth, happen to be in the right place at the right time. And I think God had a calendar. He said, you know, I'm going to create Deagle with a personality defect. He doesn't have a reverse gear, and he has a big mouth, and he's fearless. So when I tell him to go to the top of the hill to take out that gun emplacement or to say something about it, in fact, I just got a call this morning through my wife, through In Focus with uh, uh, Martin Sheen. He has a program called In Focus, and they said, it was funny, the dialogue that went on. And I said, well, you know, oh, yeah, and my, my wife said, oh, yeah, he's an expert, and he teaches in the Academy of Environmental Medicine and Anti-Aging Medicine. Oh, that sounds great. I said, but you have to understand, you know, Charlie Sheen, which is Martin's son, was on Alex Jones' show a number of times, and he deals in conspiracy theories. Ooh, okay, and all of a sudden, of course, the conversation changed. Well, I don't know, maybe, well, initially he was saying, oh, we only have millions, millions of people listening and watching on the In Focus uh, show. I said, well, he's, good. he's his own man. He'll say what he has to say to tell the truth. And that's the biggest problem in our society now is people don't tell the truth anymore, whether it's congressmen, senators, newspapers, script writers, etc. This work that you've done in these couple of books needs to be turned into a, a screen script so that people can find out the truth because it's a is an ever if you want to call fungating sore in the body politic of the mind of the population we're still suffering post 9-11 stress disorder as a nation and we're not getting over it either none that's right totally i totally agree uh, people have not processed the trauma and most people are, you know, people react to trauma in predictable ways, and uh, they, they become very easy to manipulate. Right. Yeah. I think that's what's happened. It's called Reichian mind control. What you do is you split their personality. That's why people will, sit, you know, very passively take off their shoes at the airport and, and walk through the terahertz body scanner, even though it may give them cataracts or skin cancer and damage their DNA. And, and they'll, you know, as I say, you know, bend over and fly the friendly skies. Now, people need to get a, a, a clue here. This mental trauma that's going on of taking off your shoes and body cavity searches and pat-downs and public, etc., is all meant to traumatize you to a, to a police state where everything is in control. And when they eventually bring in Obamacare, by the way, people don't know this. It's already passed. People say, oh, that might never happen. It will never happen. I said, it already happened that on page 1004, everybody with Obamacare, which is now supported by Judge Roberts, will get an implantable microchip. Everybody. This is not a maybe. This is everybody gets a chip in 2014. Every child born, every adult, and everybody, by the way, also gets forced vaccinations. Forced vaccinations. You're kidding. No. Now, people think, oh, Dr. Deagle, that's a, cons yeah, it's a conspiracy theory. I said, you know what? People need a very powerful skill I learned at three years of age. It's called reading. Reading. Stop spitting on the people that are willing to actually read and research all hours of the day and night and realize in a panic mode we're trying to tell people and they're so busy trying to just attack the, the news giver they don't even want to research it themselves. I heard uh, when I when I talked to Jonathan Kahn about the whole idea of 9-11 and he's living right there in New York and he brought out the harbinger you know about Isaiah 910 and I said what would you do if I told you that there was a financial conspiracy and a the conspiracy to demolish the buildings by the U.S. government and large financial institutions for laundering money. What would you say? So I've heard that before. I said, really? I said, well, you're going to hear a lot more from me. 
You're not going to just hear theories. This is based on such solid evidence and death threats. I even got threatened that if I even requested the tests, I'd have the Department of Defense localize, call the local authorities and I'd be arrested for even requesting the kind of tests I need to do to confirm that the buildings at World Trade Center were demolished by advanced nuclear devices and superthermate. This is no joke. I'm not joking well, here. This is my life on the line. Shot, uh, it, it, uh, if we could get into the, uh, if we could do an audit of the Bank of New York and the Fed, of course, we'd probably find the evidence of massive criminality. But uh, that audit, of course, is never going to happen. They're never going to let that happen. Well, of However, course, they're not going to let it uh, happen. If because somebody they... out there wanted to, uh, and of course, I would never encourage anyone to break the law. But if someone out there was a, is a world class hacker and wanted to become a world class hero. One way that he might do that would be to hack into the uh, Fed and the Bank of New York and find the evidence and then post it on the Internet. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is, that people don't even want to look at the evidence. When I presented the data on the World Trade Center towers uh, for the nuclear isotopes, and I'm still doing testing, now I'm going to actually start testing and request testing in Russia and China. I never did that before. I've tried everywhere, even, oh, very politely turned down last year in Japan, in Spain, and in Germany. Now, what does that tell you? And in fact, a lot of times I'd even talk to the lab directors and they were very friendly at first, very cooperative, and then all of a sudden their voice would completely change a week or so later and they wouldn't even return my emails. You know somebody's tapping them on the shoulder like, that's Deagle. That's not yeah. just Dr. Deagle. That's, that's I even had nuclear <laughs> agencies here that said, Dr. Deagle, oh, you're a medical doctor, you don't know anything about chemistry. I said, excuse me, I have the equivalent of a PhD, master's degree level in this analytic and nuclear chemistry. I'm not an idiot. When I ask you for plasma neutron spectroscopy, I know what I'm talking about. Right. Well, the, right. let us hope that the Chinese have already done the testing, Doctor. Well, if they haven't, I'm going to request it because I have material. I have people who are literally in apartments right across the World Trade Center towers. And by the way, some of these isotopes won't go away for not only centuries but millennia. They're still right. going to be there, like iron-58, which is a heavy isotope of iron caused by plasma neutron insertion. When you have a high-speed neutron that hits iron, you'll get heavy isotopes that don't show up naturally in iron ore. They only occur after a nuclear explosion, and they're stable and they're non-radioactive. So 10 million years from now, you can still pick up iron-58 if you had a girder for 9-11, and you'd be able to say, oh, you know, from space, some... future descendants of mankind come back to the ancient planet of Earth, and they say, oh, look at this. Deagle was right. They did blow up the towers with nuclear explosives as a pretext for war to invade Iraq and take all the oil, which, by the way, now is eight times more proven oil reserves in northern Iraq than all of Saudi Arabia. Eight times more oil, and that's what they can say so far. Wow. Well, it, it never had occurred to me, but the uh, until we discussed it, talked about it earlier, that uh, off air, the... Uh, I would not be surprised if the Chinese did had done this testing already. Had they, we shipped them the uh, the steel from the World Trade Center. Well, they might have. Who knows? They got a lot of scientists there, and they're and by the way, they're chemists and scientists. They're no slouches either. That's right. So, but I don't know whether or not the state would allow them to do it, or if they did, that they let the data out. Because remember, the China oil company got ninety percent of the oil after it sold through the Rothschild. Uh, they buy the oil off the wellhead at $2 a barrel and sell it to the Chinese at $90 or a regular going price. And the China oil company does processing for most of that oil into petrochemical products. So, you know, the Rothschilds get super rich. The Chinese have now the fifth largest oil refinery company in the world. And uh, and the Iraqis are being strip searched, strip mined after their country's been salted with depleted uranium. Well, the Chinese know that they're being surrounded by the United States, and they must—they certainly are aware that we've been driving up the price of oil to try to hurt them, even though it probably hasn't done that. Well, the, the, the Kirk Amendment allowed Russia and China to completely sidestep the ban on I Iran. The ban on Iran for selling oil to Europeans and so on does not apply to Russia and China. Right. They know that. The Kirk Amendment's right there in Congress. People need to understand what's really going on. It's a game by the globalist New World Order to decide who gets what when they finally divide up the pie of the new global world currency arrangement that's coming probably by next year at the latest, maybe this fall, after they collapse. But the 9-11, the real 9-11 is the one not from 9-11-2001. It's the 9-11 of 2012 coming up in just a few months. And it will be a financial 9-11. Because that collapse, that Pahanuk, the ancient ceremony of the Phoenix, they're going to resurrect a new world currency order that they're getting ready to lay on the world 
with a massive debt bomb demolishing the current world economic order. And your financial work in this book is, is stellar. How do they get your book, Black 9-11, Money, Motive, and Technology, Mark? They can go to my publisher, trinday.com. T-R-I-N-E-D-A-Y. T-R-I-N-E-D-A-Y.